Today's tutorial will teach you how to transform and adjust layers in Luminar Neo. The arrival of the Layers panel in Luminar Neo is one of the biggest updates from the previous versions of this software. This new feature allows you to combine multiple layers in one single image and create results that were previously impossible. In this tutorial, we will focus on the essential knowledge and techniques required to adjust the individual layers. OK, so let's jump straight into it. As you can see, I'm already in Luminar Neo. I'm in the catalog module and here are a few sample files we're going to be using today. As usual, if you want to use them and test it on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and then download the sample files from there. Once you have them ready, import them into Luminar Neo and we can start. Now, to start, we're going to select the night landscape and we're going to simply move it into edit module. Now, as we're going to be talking about layers, we're going to be mostly focusing on this area of our screen where there is the layers panel. The first thing we need to do is to add new layer. So to do that, we need to click on the little plus sign and here click on the load image. Once we do that, we can navigate towards the location of our sample files where you should see all three images. So let's go ahead and add the ship so we can select it and click on open. And one more time, we can click on load image and select the moon and click on open too. So this is how you load or add layers into Luminar Neo. When you add your own custom layers, they will appear in this My Images section. And when you have more of them, you can also go through by simply clicking on this arrow. Now, how do we add the layer into our Layers panel or on our image? Well, it's really simple. You just hover over one of the thumbnails. So let's say over the ship and simply click on it. Now, it will take a few seconds and then it will appear in our Layers panel. Now, as you can see, it's also on our image and we can start working with it. Now, let's go back to the layers panel and let's for a moment stay here. Now, as you can see, we have our layers here with the background at the bottom and with the new layer on the top. Now, the order is important. It's the layer that will be at the lowest part, which will be at the bottom of our image. And then the layer which will be highest or closest to the plus sign button is the one that will be all the way on the top. Now you can adjust the order by simply taking the layer and then moving it around. So I can take the ship and basically drag and drop it under the background. Of course that once I do that, the ship will disappear as it's hidden behind the background. Now to bring it back, we can just take it and drag and drop it on the top. Now again, since we're here, let's right click on the boat and see what options we have here. First option is to hide the layer. Now you can add a layer which maybe you don't need at the moment. So if that's the case, simply right click on the layer and choose hide layer. As you can see, it will disappear. And if you want to bring it back again, right click on the layer and click on show layer. From the other options, we also have an option of duplicating the layer. So when we click on that, we will simply duplicate the layer with all of its settings. Again, you can take it and move it around or adjust it. And if you don't need the layer, you can simply right click on it and select remove layer. And finally, one more important note about the layers panel, and that's the blue frame. You can see that when the layer is selected, it has the blue frame on the layers panel as well as on the image. Now, for the time being, we leave the layers panel behind and we move into our editing panel. Here, you can notice the layer properties tool. This will open anytime you select layer in the layers panel. Here, inside of the properties tabs, we have multiple different options. We can adjust the opacity of the layer, going all the way up to 100, basically making sure that the layer isn't transparent at 
tall or we can take the slider and bring it all the way down, which will technically remove the layer from your image. Now, just like with any sliders in Luminar Neo, when you double click on them, they will reset. But for us, let's go ahead and increase the opacity all the way to 100. The next option is the blend mode. Here you can adjust the blend mode for the individual layer, and we will talk about that in a moment. However, since we're looking at the options here, let's finish it up. We have the option to flip the layer. We can flip it horizontally with this button, or we can flip it vertically with this button right here. Let's have a look. Up, down, and left and right. Now the final section is called image mapping. This is really handy when you import the layer in, as it helps you to adjust the ratio or the position of the layer. Let's have a look at it. When we click on fit, it will basically take the layer and it will make sure that the layer will fit in the frame. The next option is fill. What that's going to do when we zoom out a little bit, it will take the layer and it will enlarge it or scale it in such a way that it will cover the entire frame. And finally, we have the option to stretch. And that was pretty much the default when we have imported the layer. And what it does, it takes the layer and it stretches it across the entire frame. So if you want to fix the ratio, fit button is your best friend. So once we click on fit, it basically keep the original and the correct ratio and just fit it in the image. So let's zoom in a little bit. And now, since we know what we have in the layer properties, we can turn our attention towards the image and towards the transformation of the layer. So as you can see, when I hover over the layer or over the active layer, our mouse change into this hand. Now that will allow us to move the layer around. So all I need to do is to hover over the layer and then click and drag the layer around. So once we adjust the position, then we can scale it or adjust the size. Now we have a two ways to do this. First, we can use any of these four white dots, which allows us to make the layer smaller or bigger while keeping the original ratio. So again, smaller or bigger. The second option is to hover over the sides of the layer. And by doing that, you will be able to adjust individually the height or the width of the layer by basically hovering over the edge, clicking and dragging them up and down or left and right. Let's just undo this, bring it back and continue. Now let's make the boat a little bit smaller, position her over the water and let's have a look at the final option when it comes to the transformation and that's a simple rotation when you hover outside of the layer you will see that your mouse will turn into these two arrows so once you do that you can again just click and then rotate the layer around so just like that you can rotate the layer again let's undo it and let's quickly run through it again so hover over the layer and move the layer around Adjust the size with the use of the white dots, making sure that the ratio stay original, or you can adjust individually the height or width by dragging the sides of the layer. Finally, don't forget that you can rotate the layer by hovering outside of the layer and then simply rotating it around. So now we know how to transform the layer. So let's go ahead and place the boat over the water, make it a little smaller, maybe here, here, and place it right here. Now with that being done, we can zoom in and have a look at the bottom of the boat. You can see that there is a shadow and really this part should be in the water. So how can we adjust this? Well, it's really simple. We can use masking. So while we have our layer still selected, let's go into layer properties and select the masking. In the masking for this part, we're gonna use brush and we're gonna use the erase as we're gonna be erasing specific part of the layer. After that, let's zoom in even closer using command or control plus. And when I have the brush selected, I can use a space bar to then move around. 
Now, looking at the image again, you can see that we have the shadow and at least this part should be submerged in the water. So to do that, what we're going to do, we're going to adjust our brush size. Uh, let's say that we're going to go somewhere around 160. Softness, we're going to keep on 100. And strength, let's go for 70. After this, we can simply start brushing at this part of the boat and brush it in the water. So you will see that as I'm going to be brushing over, the shadow and the bottom part of the boat will disappear and it will look like she is, or the boat is, submerged in the water. And I think that looks quite decent. Now, I know it's not great, however, it will give you an idea on what we're trying to do, and you will also understand that the masking is important part of working with layers. So now we have the boat in the water, and we are done with masking. However, looking at it, it doesn't really look like it fits the image. So we need to adjust it so it match better the background. And this is a great opportunity to show you how you can adjust individually each of the layers using the tools in Luminar Neo. Now, before we go into continue, I want to quickly remind you that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Winter Bundle. Our popular bundle is back with over 860 winter elements to power up your favorite Luminar Neo tools. For a little fee, you will get winter skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, working layers, LUTs, and presets to transform your winter images with just a few clicks. Plus, if you get it now, you will also get an additional festive bundle to really get you ready for the upcoming holiday season. Now, to get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video, or to find out more about it, head to our website, cleverphotographer.com. So first thing, you need to make sure that the layer you want to adjust is selected, and then you can turn your attention towards the editing toolbar. Here, we're going to do very simple adjustment. We're just going to jump into develop tool. And then here we're going to adjust the exposure. So we're going to make the boat a little bit darker. Let's say somewhere around here. And we're going to also jump into the color section and add a little bit of cool temperature to better match it with the rest of the image. So I think somewhere around here, we can also take the tint and bring it down. And that's about it. Of course, that you can check the before and after. And I think that this is much better. Now you could continue with any of the other tools available in any of the sections of the editing toolbar, but this will give you an idea on how to adjust and edit individually each of the layers. Now to finish it off, I promise you that we're going to look at the blend modes. So for this, we're going to return to our layers panel. Again, click on the plus sign and we're going to add our moon. Once the moon appears, you already know what to do. We're going to go into layer properties and click on fit. So that will bring back the original ratio. And while we edit, let's make it much smaller and position it just behind the mountain. So let's say somewhere around here. Once we have the moon positioned, we then return to layer properties and increase the opacity slider all the way to 100. However, looking at it, you can see now we have the black background on it, so it doesn't look great. Well, for this, we're going to use the blend mode. So again, just like with any other layers, you first need to make sure that you have the correct layer selected, and then you can go into layer properties and click on the blend mode drop down box. Here you have a multiple different blend modes available, but first let's talk about what are the blend modes. The blending modes are mathematical equations that blend layers based on their hue, saturation, luminosity, or combination of these components. You can use blending modes to apply overlays, textures, or target adjustments to specific areas of your image without creating layer masks. Now, additionally, blending modes are an excellent way to create non-destructive effects. 
the blend you apply does not change the pixels, only the visual output. You can always change or remove the blending mode based on what you working on. So coming back to our example, this is a moon overlay. So what we need to do, we just need to move through our list and get to screen, which helps us to remove the black background and blend the moon with the rest of the image. So let's click on the screen blend mode. And just like that, we have the moon on our sky. However, you guessed it, it doesn't look great as it kind of hovers over the mountain. Well, by now you already know what to do. Quickly jump into masking, select the brush, zoom in using command or control plus, then a space bar to move around, switch your brush into erase, adjust the softness a little bit, strength on 100, and then very quickly just brush over the mountain. And by doing that, you basically hide the moon behind the mountain. Let's have a look at it. And there you have it. This is how you add the moon, remove the background, blend it with the image and mask it behind the mountain, all done with power of layer editing. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.